I want us to thank him because our God is a great God, is the mighty one. And unto him we have gathered this morning. Let's worship him. We have come to the true and the living God. We have come to the great I am, the I am that I am, the God that is never that can never change, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. We have come to the presence of the Lord to be with him, to worship him as he has commanded us. Let's bless the name of the Lord. He is the Lord God Almighty. There is no like unto him. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's lift up his name. Let's adore him. Who is like unto thee, O God? Among other gods, who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, no fearful in praises, always doing wonderful things. Let's bless the name of the Lord. He said, I am the Lord, and beside me there is none. Let's bless him. Let's worship him. Let's lift up his name. Let's glorify his name. Let's honor him. Let's thank him for the privilege to be in his presence today. Let's honor him. God, I thank you for the privilege to appear before you today. As you have commanded me, Lord, I'm grateful unto you. The privilege to gather together with the saints. As you have commanded, Lord, I'm grateful unto you. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be here. I worship you. And as we have come to the God Almighty, I want us to begin to pray, God, we have come, O Lord. We want you to be in our midst. We want you to take preeminence in everything that we are going today let, to do today. Let's begin to pray, God, take preeminence. Lord, take preeminence. Lord, come and have your way. We have gathered unto you. Lord, we want you to come down in the mighty name of Jesus. We need you. Everything that we are going to do today, that the Lord will take preeminence. That Jesus Christ will be lifted up in everything. Let's plead for his presence and power. His presence and power in our midst today. The power of God working in our midst, working wonders of salvation, working wonder of transformation. Oh, Lord God Almighty, you come down and move in our midst. We want you, Lord. Let's plead for his presence and glory. Lord, you will come down and your glory will descend in our midst today. Let's pray for his presence and deliverance in the presence of the Lord. That will be deliverance. Today, Lord, we have come unto you. You are the mighty God. Lord, your presence and deliverance. Every bondage will be broken. Every joke will be removed. There will be deliverance in the mind, deliverance in the body. Lord, your presence and deliverance today. The presence of God with us here as we gather physically for our brethren that are connected online. The presence of God and enlightenment. Oh Lord, your presence enlightening us, opening our minds, opening our understanding. Oh Lord, you will come down. Your presence and your enlightenment we need today in the service of today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for your presence and your enlightenment in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord God Almighty. The Bible says they look unto him and they were enlightened. Lord, we have come to your presence. Oh, Lord, enlighten us. Anywhere there is darkness, it will depart. Because in the presence of God, there will be light. In the name of Jesus, let's pray God in the service of today. Lord, enlighten us. Enlighten us. Anything of darkness, wherever it is, it will depart. God, let there be light. Lord, let there be light. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Your presence and enlightenment, oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Everything of darkness by your power and by your grace, we pray. 
In Jesus' name. Enlightenment of God. Let's pray the presence of God and his upliftment that the Lord will lift up. As we have come into his presence, spiritually, every weakness will depart. There will be upliftment by the spirit of the Lord. That the Lord God Almighty will lift us, his people. As we have come, well, no matter the level we hear, that through the service of today, the Lord will lift us higher. Because we have come into the presence of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, your presence and upliftment, O Lord God. You will lift us up, O Lord God, O oh great spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord God, I pray him. In the mighty, upliftment, in the mighty name of Jesus. We will be left, O oh Lord God, on the same level. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord God, I pray him. His presence and transformation. Transformation in the inner mind. Transformation in our relationship with God. Oh, that the Lord would take us oh, to a deeper level, you know, to a higher level. Oh, Lord, your presence and transformation. Oh, God Almighty, come down in our midst. We are pleading. In the name of Jesus, oh, Lord God, we love you like you have said. In the mighty name of Jesus, your presence and your transformation. Let's begin to pray that God will draw people unto him today. In an entire that people will be drawn unto the Lord online and physically. Lord God Almighty, draw the people every form of tiredness, every form of weariness, that the Lord will take it away. Anything that wants to hinder, prevent the people from connecting, from joining, that God will take it away. That will be strength to gather to the presence of the Lord. God will draw the people unto him. Every scheme of the wicked one, not to prevent people from the service of today, the Lord would remove it. Whatever may be his scheme, his strategies, that the Lord God Almighty will take it away. In the, every distraction that the Lord will remove, that the people will come and enjoy the blessings of God to be renewed, to be transformed. Lord, we pray, whatever may be the scheme of the wicked one, to bring that people, Lord, we pray that everybody in Jesus' name, they may be moved, oh Lord God, in the Jesus, who oh Lord God, you will have your way in the mighty name of Jesus by your power and by your prayer. Lord, draw the people unto you, those that have been invited, those who oh Lord God that we have called upon. Lord, we pray that our newcomers bring them back again. Oh, thunder, us bring them, oh Lord God, unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that they will come to be in your presence in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. Our God will prepare our hearts as we have gathered to the Lord. Our hearts will be prepared to receive from the Lord. Let's begin to pray every form of stone in the heart, every form of stone in the heart that God Almighty will destroy it. Those things that want to hinder, even though we have come, we are connected and those things that want to be in the heart to hinder us from receiving from God, that God by his power, he will take them away. Every care in the, in the mind, that the Lord will remove it. Every stone, every form of hardness, by the power of the spirit, they'll be broken up. They'll be removed. That the word of God, the word of life may penetrate in the name of Jesus. Father God, we are praying that our hearts will be prepared, prepared to receive from you because of our God is before us. I pray that our heart will be made ready. Whatever may be the stone in the heart, whatever may be the stone in the heart, oh Lord, I want to compete with your word. That want to hinder us, oh Lord God. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they be removed in Jesus' name. Every form of care, every form of distraction, oh Lord God, we are connected online, or we are here physically, every distraction they'll be removed in Jesus' name. That our heart will be opened to the Lord and his word. Like Mary, we will be still in the presence of the Lord. There will be a focus and attention on the Lord that the Lord will help us. Like Mary, we will sit. Like Mary, we will sit at his feet. Oh, to draw from him, to receive strength from him, to receive instruction from him. Instruction that will transform our life. Instruction that will draw us closer unto him that the Lord will help us. Every form of busy body, that the Lord will take it away. Busyness in the mind, restlessness in the mind, that the Lord will take it away. We will be still in the presence of the Lord. We will be still, you know, to receive, to draw strength, to draw grace from the presence of the Lord. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, that our heart will be still before you like Mary, oh Lord God. We will say that of me, to draw, oh Lord God, from the world. Oh Lord God, of your riches in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God, that our heart will be hopeful in Jesus' name. Oh Lord God.
that the Lord will help us, we will hear and understand. We will hear and receive. We will hear and will be changed. Our children, our youth, they will not be left behind. That the Lord will open their hearts. Oh Lord, open their hearts to receive your word. Oh Lord, open their hearts to know the truth. And the Lord will draw them in any activity that they are doing as their teachers, is, they, they are taking them through. The Spirit of God will open their heart. The Spirit of the Lord will grant their illumination and they will be able to decide and to receive the Lord and to say on the part of the Lord, oh Lord, reach out unto our children. Oh Lord, open their heart. Let's pray for our language class. God will reach out unto them. Open hearts, oh God, to be able to receive the word of life today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray to be received in Jesus' name, to hear your word and to understand, to hear, oh Lord God, and to make decisions for you, to hear, oh Lord God, and to be drawn unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, we will hear and we understand. Our children will hear and understand. In any activity that their children will not go to, them, they will see the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God, if we don't go in their coloring, in their painting, oh Lord God, they will see the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will be drawn unto you in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray for our ministers, as the Lord God has no, no prepared them, he will fill them today and use them to touch lives. God, God fill our ministers with his power, with his unction. Oh Lord, pour your wisdom upon them. Pour your power upon them. As they are mounting the puppet, they will come in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. As the side of the scripture will be taught, they will teach in the wisdom of God, in the power of the Lord. Oh, that teaching that will draw us closer. That teaching that will not be an open door oh, to our lives that will make us to be what God wants us to be. That will bring that solution oh, to any problem. Oh Lord, pour your wisdom upon them. Pour your power upon them. Speak, oh Lord, through them to us. In the name of Jesus, that the Lord God Almighty will give them oh, that, you know, that discernment of the Spirit. That will be able to speak the word that he wants them to speak. Oh, even though they are prepared, God will take over them as they come here and they will be able to declare the word of God the word of life in the mighty name of Jesus the word of grace in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God we pray fill them by your grace oh Lord God and fill them by your grace in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God we envy them oh Lord God today in the mighty name of Jesus as we have come to the presence of the Lord needs will receive God's attention today needs in our spirit needs in our body needs in our family we never situation. Lord, we have come to your presence, oh Lord God, today. Oh Lord, every need, we receive the touch of God. We receive the attention of God because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy at his right time, pleasure forevermore. Lord, we have come unto you. Lord, our needs will receive your attention. In our spiritual life, in our physical life, we have come, oh Lord God, reach out unto us. And whatever may be your need, my brother, my sister, present it unto the Lord because you have come unto the living God. Oh Lord, I have come. I will not live here the same. Oh Lord, this will receive your attention today. I want your touch today. I want your power today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Let's pray God will pour his blessing upon us. He will bless us today with his word and the grace to receive. I will, he will be coming to instruct us that the Lord will give us the grace because the blessings of God are already there. That God will give us the grace to receive as the instruction will be coming, as the admonition will be coming, as God will be calling us to one thing or the other, Lord, give me the grace to receive. Oh, give me the grace to receive in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I present myself in any way you will be talking and ministry to me. Give the grace to receive in Jesus' name. Let's begin to bless and worship the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for today because we have come unto him. The Lord God Almighty is going to lift us up. He's going to transform us. He's going to do new things in our life. He's going to take us deeper and his blessings will be upon us. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. In Jesus' name we have prayed.
Our Heavenly Father, we bless you, we worship you, we magnify your holy name. Lord, we thank you because you are the great one. You are the mighty one. You are the God Almighty, and there is none beside you. And before you, we have come today. We thank you for the privilege to appear before you. And I pray today, Lord, as we have tabled the request before you, we ask you, Lord, your presence will be here. There will be enlightenment. There will be upliftment. And the power of God will walk in us. And your power, O oh Lord God, will descend to bring us closer unto you, nearer unto you, that we will live here transformed in Jesus' name. Our brethren that are behind, we pray that, Lord, you will quicken them, and those people, oh God, online, and those of us here, you will reach out unto us, even our children, they will not be left behind in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray you will do a new thing in our midst today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, we bless you, oh Lord, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, rise up as we sing our four congregational song, All to Jesus I Surrender. Jesus, I 
joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to His name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Let's prepare ourselves for the Sabbath scriptures and prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for another privilege to hear and to learn at your feet. We bless your name for counting us worthy to be hearers of these words. We pray that as we give ourselves to these words, that, Lord, the profiting would appear to all in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for uh, this time. It's time for our search the scriptures. And by the grace of God, before we go into our study, um, we would first review what we learned the last time. And the topic was assurance of salvation. And what do we mean by assurance of salvation? It is the confidence of forgiving sins. It's the confidence of forgiving sins and the adoption into God's family. And we also learned that salvation is deliverance from sin and its results and its consequences. And it has fruits. There's a way to also know that you are saved. There is freedom from sin, obedience to God's word. And you live a life that is pleasing to God. You delight in pleasing God and you delight in fellowshipping with people of like faith. And the charge to us um, from that study was that if we neglect salvation, what it means is we are neglecting eternal fellowship with God. And because we reject God, we are choosing um, indirectly to um, spend our lives in eternity in hell. And as we go into our study today, we are building on that. And our topic is titled, The Surrendered Consecrated Life. The Surrendered Consecrated Life. Do we have anybody who can recite for us the memory verse. Anybody? Broima, do you want to try? Okay. Bro, Tony. Yes. Brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, sacrifice acceptable unto God holy, accept you, sorry, let me take it again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, for the reasonable service. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, if you can call us. Thank you very much for the trial. Let's read it together. It's on the screen after the count of two. One, two, go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We are going to be reading from our text, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and we are also going to read Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 10. And we will start with Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. 
chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Praise the Lord. We're going to the introduction. What we are talking about today is um, the surrendered, consecrated life. And when we talk about consecration, what are we talking about? Consecration means to set yourself or to set something apart in devotion or dedication to divine service. That is what consecration means. And it's important because it is central to our progress in our relationship with God. We have examples in scriptures like Abraham, Moses, David, Paul the Apostle, and so on. They went far with God, or what distinguished them? in their work with God, and why we so hold them in high esteem is because of their consecration. They devoted themselves entirely to the Lord. And there are also examples of those who failed, and the reason we can attribute to that is because they did not totally yield themselves to the Lord and to His service. Consecration is central to our progress in our relationship with God, and it would also set us apart as we set ourselves apart to God for his work and his service. His consecration would also set us apart and make us move from a common level, ordinary level, to an extraordinary position. And as we give ourselves to this study, as we put it into practice, the Lord will lift us up uh, on high in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first question is, why are some believers not effective in their ministries? Why are some believers not effective in their ministries? I would like Sister Susan to please read for us Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And I would also like um, Sister Justina to please read for us Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 21. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I, so some believers are not fully effective, effective because they are still conformed to this world. They haven't fully yielded themselves to God, so they're limited. Thank you very much. They have not, they have not, they, they conform to this world, or if they say they are not going to conform to this world, they have not also renewed their mind. Thank you very much. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 21. Sister Justina, please. Sister Justina? Okay. Brother Daniel, please, can you help us with that? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 21, where the pastors are become br brutish and have not sought the Lord, therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. So they are not, uh, they are not sought unto the Lord. They have not given themselves unto the, the, the Lord. Lord. Thank you very much. And this also is instructive um, because this is also a responsibility for leaders and leadership to seek the Lord 
otherwise they put their sheep or they put their flock at risk. In Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, it tells us about Demas, who loved this present age, and because of that, he forsook Paul the apostle and his company. We go to our first point, call to consecration and total surrender. Here, the charge is, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. God demands consecration. God demands our total surrender, and this is for to every true believer. And the Bible gives us examples, but the highest example we find in our Lord Jesus, because he gave his all for the redemption of the world. That leads us to question two. Who are those called to offer themselves as living sacrifices? Who are those people who are called to offer themselves as living sacrifices? I would like Brayoka to please help us with Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26 says, <coughs> My son, give me thy heart and let the eyes observe my ways. Who are those people called to offer themselves to God? People that are called to offer themselves as living sacrifice are those that has given their life to Christ, those their, their life have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you very much. We say that they are sons and daughters of God, children of God. We are called to offer ourselves unto him. We go to the next point, reason for, tr for the believer's consecration. Why? The basis of our consecration is God's grace and mercy towards us all, um, towards all mankind. And because of this, an expression of our gratitude for all that God has done for us is that we give ourselves to him. We, we yield ourselves to him. It makes us a holy vessel for the master's use. Christ sacrificed his life for our salvation, and nothing can equal the price he has paid for us at Calvary. So because of this expression in gratitude for his mercies, and for his grace towards us, there is also a benefit. It will compel us to surrender totally to the Lord um, unreservedly. Our next question is, um, what can the believer render unto the Lord for all his benefits? What can the believer render unto the Lord for all his benefits? I'd like Sister Patience to please read for us Psalm 116, verse 17. And Broima, please read for us First Kings chapter 17, verse 13 and 15. Psalm 116, verse 17. Verse 17. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and you will call upon the name of the Lord. So, what can the believer render to the Lord for his, for his benefit? So, as a believer, you always give thanks and praises to God for the sacrifice he did for your sins. Thank you very much. Our next uh, reader. First Kings chapter 17, verse 13 and 15. I read, said, and Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and give it unto me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. 17, and 15. 15, okay. Says, so she went away and did according to 
the word of Elijah and she and he and her household are up for many days. Yeah, we see that uh, we have to offer ourselves and also uh, offer ourselves to the Lord so that He can use us in so that we can He can use us in whatever that He asks us to do. It means uh, our reasonable sacrifice. You know, we have to sacrifice ourselves so that God be able to use us. Thank you very much. And like we see in this case, this woman offered of her substance, the thing that she had, even though little, she still gave it to the Lord. Our next point is our reasonable service. The Bible in verse 1 of our text in Romans chapter 12 says, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You, we, we all, as a church, as Christians, as believers, are to yield and surrender our body as offering unto the Lord. As we read in one of the questions, my son, give me your heart and let my eyes observe my ways. Every part of our body should concentrate on things that honor and promote holiness. If you consecrate the members of your body to the Lord, you will do the things that please him. Our next point is our holy and exalted priesthood. The Old Testament priests, they offered daily sacrifices to God. Similarly, likewise, we should offer up sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. So every day we make up our minds, we consciously do the things that please God, our hands, our feet, our eyes, everything. It should be a conscious, deliberate effort, intentional effort that everything we do brings glory to his name. And such sacrifice would include our time, to include our talent, and also our treasure. We should also bear our cross daily for Christ's sake. In question four, we are going to ask what can be offered as sacrifice to the Lord? What are the things that we can offer as sacrifice unto the Lord? We would read Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. I would like Rolandry to please help us with that. Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. Four thirty six says, and I read, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostle called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field, owned and brought the money and put it in the apostle's feet. We can use our properties, what we own, as a point of contact for serving the Lord by giving it to people of the Lord to, to propagate the gospel. Thank you very much, our treasure. And we see in Acts chapter 9, verse 39, we can use our talents from the example of Dorcas. With her hands, she sold raiment and gave to the people. And in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible tells us, as much as we find the opportunity, we should do good unto all men, especially them of the household of faith. In question 5, it's asking, how can we bear our cross daily for the sake of time? The scriptures references there tell us that we must endure to the end. Two things we must be mindful of. We should endure to the end because the love of men, despite the fact that the love of many might wax cold, and also we should endure to the end even though you might be hated for Christ's sake, even though there might be opposition. And we should also look unto Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. 
the last point talks about the Christian's non-conformity to the world, and we are to appreciate Christ's love and sacrifice by willingly rendering acceptable service unto him. Our service will not be acceptable if we are not if if we are conformed to the world in fashion, politics, inordinate ad- ambition, and godly pursuit. In conclusion, what have we learned today? God demands consecration and total surrender from every true believer. Consecration is a token of our gratitude unto God for our salvation. And every part of our body, we must consecrate to the things that honor and promote holiness. And such sacrifices include our time, our talents, and our treasures. We should also bear our cross daily for Christ's sake, and we must keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Let's bow down our heads as we take these lessons to the Lord in prayer. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body, present yourself a living sacrifice. What has God done for you? Why not from this day tell the Lord, Lord, I am mindful of everything you've done for me. And if you make a demand on my life, it's not too much. I present it before you. Give me the grace that every day, my hands, my feet, my eyes, my time, my talent, my treasure, I will always be on the lookout to offer it back to you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the service of today and what we learned in the study scriptures. We want to ask um, if there's anyone here in the church or online in the three class uh, who has a question. Um, If you have a question based on the study, you can raise up your hand and ask the question. Any question, please? Online? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the study of today, we looked at the surrendered, consecrated life. And we read from Romans chapter 12, uh, from verse 1. And there we see the admonition of Paul to to the Romans. And it's good to know who Paul was writing to because it helps to put a context to the message. Here he was writing to the Romans and you see in verse 1, when he started in verse 1, he says, I beseech you therefore. It meant that he had been saying something before, before he started, before he started to make this admonition to them. And if you read verse 11, uh, chapter 11, you will discover that he had been talking to them about the privilege and the mercy of God upon their life. In fact, he called them, in verse chapter 11, he called them wild branches. They were not Jews. They were not Christians. Normally, ordinarily, they shouldn't be part of the Abrahamic covenant. But the in, in chapter 11, um, he said, Paul said, God grafted them in. And even some of the real branches were taken out. Where, where, who didn't obey, who didn't believe God, were taken out. And these ones were grafted in. And then he began to be amazed and talk about the riches of God's goodness to them. 
God's goodness and severity, you know, bringing them into this, the privilege that they had and that they were grafted into, into the main branch. And then because of that, it now says, what then should they do as a mark of appreciation to God for what God has done for them and that God has saved them? And that's what brought him to verse chapter 12 here that we looked at today to say in verse 1. Let's read that together again. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. You need to underline that word, brethren. It was a appeal. It was a plea. It was an appeal. It was a prayer to them, to brethren, the beloved, those who are saved. They had given their life. They had been grafted in to the, into the main, main branch, you know, the main tree. And they called them brethren. Therefore means that consecration is really not for everybody. The fact that uh, we had the Sardis scripture and we preach it openly here, of course, everybody can be conse consecrated, but it is not, there is something that needs to have happened before we start to talk about consecration. Consecration comes after you are first giving your life to Jesus. Anything you do before giving your life to Jesus is called works. And those self-righteousness and the works, they are not accepted by God. The only people who can present themselves to God are the people who are first giving themselves to Him. That's why here He called them brethren. And as we talk about this, I want us to check up. Have you been born again? Have we been, have you been in our life to Jesus? Because He said, when you do that, you know, that then we start to talk about consecration. You should see consecration as, you know, a flower. And, you know, repentance, salvation as the root. So it's only something that comes out of conversion. It's a fruit that manifests when somebody realizes what God has done for him, and then he gives himself to God. And you see that it is voluntary. He says in that same verse 1, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is a voluntary act. In uh, one of our texts in uh, in Numbers, uh, chapter six, the Bible tells the uh, uh, gives an account of what you need to do to be a Nazarite. It gives them, you know, if somebody wants to take the oath of the Nazarene, you know, it says, number one, you should never drink wine. You must not drink anything that is of the fruit of the vine. You must not shave your hair. And it gave them a lot of con uh, conditions. And it says, throughout that period, that person must be consecrated to God voluntarily. Some Nazarenes in the Old Testament, you know, were born from their womb. Like Samson, for example, John the Baptist, they were consecrated to God from their womb. But now God calls us to a voluntary act of sacrifice that you give yourself to him voluntarily, wholly, acceptable unto him. And it means then that when you consecrate to God, you are presenting yourself, setting yourself apart to be used by him. In fact, let's read in the book of Lamentations. If you read in Lamentations chapter 4, do we know where Lamentation is in the Bible? Is after which book? Lamentation is after? After Jeremiah. After Jeremiah. Yes. Lamentations. Let's read from chapter 4. We're going to read from verse 7. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible said there that a Nazarite were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. That tells you of what it meant then to be a, Nazar a Nazarite. And God is calling us to be the Nazarites of today. In purity, purer than snow. In whiteness, whiter than milk. That the Lord looks at us and he sees, this person is totally given to me. That is what the Lord is calling you and I to today. And I pray that the Lord will help us to give ourselves only to God in Jesus' name. And when we talk about it, you know, it is as if you take a paper and you present it. And somebody says, sign under the paper. And you sign under the paper. And then you hand that paper to God. 
and God can write anything he wants. And you are saying, whatever God you write, whatever you want to do through me, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Whatever, you, whatever God writes on that paper, you are signing and saying, God, I'm giving totally for you. I'm wholly given to you. We learned that also, you know, also in our, in our last celebration service on commitment, consecration that goes beyond the ordinary. I pray that the Lord will help us to do that in Jesus' name. And consecration is not an abstract term. It's not an abstract word. When you consecrate yourself to God, it will be seen in your priorities. It will be seen in the, your attitude to the things of God. Somebody who is consecrated to God, you see that he only wants to please God. He wants to promote God. Everything he does in terms of his service, he will go beyond the ordinary. In terms of his devotion, he is doing everything. His life pleases God. And the Bible says that when we do this, and you know the blessings of consecration will be our portion in Jesus' name. So I want to challenge us today. Consecration is what separates the ordinary believer from the uh, from the extraordinary one. Consecration is what defines you know what separates you know people who really get the riches of God from those who operate at the you know at the ferry ferry you know at the ferry ferry. God wants us to be closer to him. He wants to do more for us, like he did with Abraham, when he called him to perfection, like he did with David, and, uh, that, that made him call him a man after his heart. Those men were consecrated, and God wants us to give ourselves to him, and I pray that the Lord will help us to give ourselves to him completely in Jesus' name. We're going to rise up, and we're going to go to God once again. We're going to say, Lord, I give myself to you. I consecrate my life to you, my body, my mouth. When you consecrate to God, you know, you devote your whole body. Your mouth will speak no evil. Your eyes will see no evil. Your ears will hear no evil. You devote all your body to the Lord. Say, Lord, help me to consecrate my life unto you. Take my life. Take my life. Take my body. Take my intellect. Take every part of my life. I consecrate myself to you. In purity, I want to be purer than snow. In whiteness, whiter than milk. Make me wholly given to you, Lord. Make me wholly given to you, Lord. It's your reasonable service. As part of everything that God has done for you, as a thanksgiving and appreciation for everything God has done for you, you're saying, Lord, I give myself to you. Let's also pray that as we are here in his presence, as we have come, that all that the Lord wants to work in us and all that the Lord will require of us in the spirit of these words we have heard already, the grace to respond. Let's bring our hearts before the almighty God. Tell the Lord, Lord, here I am. This is my heart. Begin your work in me. Let's remember our church in this land, in this country. The ministry, let's pray that upon all our leaders, the hand of the Lord will continually rest upon them. That the Lord will lift them up. Our national overseer, our church here in Amsterdam, in the region, including our Mary, all the other mother church, all the other sister churches, Rotterdam, Den Haag, Neindhoven. 
steady, Lord, Lord, as you have planted us in these places, Lord, the, wish, the vision, the grace, the growth that we desire, Lord, let it happen in the name of Jesus. Let's also pray for our general superintendent, the leader of the church, and the Lord will strengthen him. The Lord will renew his strength. The global crusade is coming up this week that the Lord will so anoint him. The Bible says how the Lord anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good because God was with him. Let's say, oh Lord, we want your presence to walk with our GS during this program. That we will be partakers, the signs and the wonders. As he goes about through the media, the digital media, as we would connect, we would receive our divine touch in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that every distraction or hindrance to our participation, the Lord will take it away. The readiness, the preparation that the Lord wants to see so that he would say, yes, these people are ready for me. I will pour out my blessing upon them. Let's the Lord help us. As we invite the people, as we proclaim this news, the people will come. And pray for yourself again that as you are here this morning, the Lord will touch you. In Jesus' name we pray. It's now time for us to give our tithes and our offering. You would receive a ticket request for you to pay digitally. And for those of us who are in the church who you have the, your offerings or your tithes here, you can also raise them up as we take it to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful for how you have been teaching us, the privilege we have to hear your word. We thank you also for the privilege to offer unto you. Lord, we ask that you would receive it in Jesus' name. All the blessings that come for, from giving and putting our lives before you and giving ourselves to you. Lord, we pray we will be recipients of them all in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Once you've given, you may please have your seat. And for our brethren online, we just give you a few seconds to... Offer. Praise the Lord. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. Do we have any newcomer connected online? Um, okay. In the absence of um, us having a newcomer in our midst, we are going to just quickly run through our meeting days. Nothing has changed. Sunday we are here for Bible studies on Tuesday. Um, the three brethren also meet on Tuesday. A revival service starts now at 7.30. So it's now in line with our vigil. And the number to connect online is also on the screen, which is used for the service uh, today. But we have a special announcement, and we have been publicizing this for some time now. And by the grace of God, this is the week we have been looking up to God for. Praise the Lord. And we have a program coming up. And the title is what? Divine Touch for Total Freedom. It's not just any kind of touch. It's a touch that is going to make a difference. It's a touch for total freedom. And our GS will be ministering. And it will be starting this Thursday on the 26th. And it will run all through till the 31st. 
So our brethren who are here in church would receive the flyer. Um, so please help share it. Just take um, as many as you can so that you can give to as many as come your way between now and even during the program because God wants to do something in our time. And we want to encourage everyone to please invite people, people who have challenges, who have problems, who are sick. Let's tell them to come. Those that cannot come, tell them to connect. And as we do that, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And during this program, our church, the physical church, will be opened on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday. So on Friday, we all encu we encourage you all to be here by 6 p.m. Saturday as well by 6 p.m. Five, 5 p.m. on Saturday. So 6 p.m. on Friday, 5 p.m. on Saturday. And on Sunday, we will be here normal time because we are doing a hybrid of our celebration service and also this crusade. Our churches in Eindhoven, in Rotterdam, they would also be physically pre meeting, so let us not be left out as well. And our choir would also be ministering, so let's uh, participate fully. Those who connect online, please do so with your videos on. And as we do that, the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Also, this coming Sunday, we have our celebration service. So we are doing a hybrid with the program. So we would start up with the celebration service, and then we will connect to the venue of our crusade. Praise the Lord. It's now time for our Bible reading, and we'll be taking the reading from the book of Romans chapter 12. We're reading from verse 1 to 21. Chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. 
for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. May the Lord bless the reading of His word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So, I talk to Saint um, at Calvary. Yes, I spent in vanity and pride, caring not that our Lord was crucified. Though not, it was for him, for me he died on Calvary.
hear your voice when you sing. Uh, so as we go to the next one, we are going to sing another one and another one. Um, you have to sing with all your voice. Amen. Uh, praise God. That's our worship today. Our sh worship is singing these songs. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. <laughs> Redeemer, my Savior, art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is now. <laughs>
Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the admonition. Thank you for our prayers unto you. Lord, we pray that you will touch us so that what we hear will be practical in our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, those at the front have not received the... 
is less blink more. We are looking at the word of God together on the joy of true consecration. The joy of true consecration. We have read from our text, which is chapter 12 of Romans. And just as we have been told, this chapter 12 did not just come on its own. If you look at verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, something happened before. Uh, and definitely, God throwing the door of righteousness open to the Gentiles, it meant something. Because the people who are called, the Jews, because of unbelief, they were temporarily rejected. And God saying, the rejection of the Jews has opened the door so that we Gentiles, we could come in. But we should beware, lest we ourselves be rejected. And that's the warning that God has given unto us because God is good on the one side, but God is severe on the other side as well. The message of today is something crucial to all of us because when we talk about joy, true joy, there is none that is greater than that one which our Lord Jesus Christ gives because it is the joy of salvation. It is the joy that brings us out of the sorrows of the world and into the, into the area, the environment of heaven where there is something called joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. How? Holy. Acceptable unto God. So we are presenting the body unto God in a holy, in an acceptable way. And if there is any service that we will have, this is the only reasonable service. In other words, if there is any reasonable way to serve the Lord, it is this. We may go to church, we may listen to preachers, we may listen to prophets, we may listen to evangelists, and everybody has his or her own idea about how to serve God. But God has only one way. And he says, if you want to serve me, if there is anything that is reasonable, it is this presenting your body unto God as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. That is the reasonable service. Sinful body is unreasonable. Carnal body is unreasonable. Selfish body is unreasonable. Partial body is unreasonable. Unholy body is unreasonable. Unacceptable service, unacceptable presentation unto God is unreasonable. This is the only reasonable service. And the Bible goes further by saying, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and again what? Acceptable. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 now. And then, perfect will of God. Are we following, my brethren? The reason for the outline is for reference for you. When we open the Bible, just open the Bible. Amen. Amen. Because we will be reading from God's book. Outline is for comments and is good. I'm giving you today just a reference. And not only for you, so that when you get home, you can share it with other people and say, this is what I learned. And it also gives you the uh, opportunity to say, okay, this is how I can write my notes when I come to church. Eh? So that you, you get something here and you allow it to work in your life because God is taking us on a journey. The church must make progress. Believers must climb up. And God has a pathway, what is leading us. 
so that when you come to church, you know that you want to do the will of God. And what is that will? That one, by God's will, will be, you know, uh, unfolding and taking us on a journey, the journey that God wants us to take. Because the purpose of God for the church is unique. For you, the purpose of God is unique. And God has a pathway of leading you to that purpose, using his word to lead you to that purpose. And as you yield yourself personally, you will see that you experience that joy. We are looking at two points today. Number one, the description of a consecrated life. What does it mean? How do we explain that? And number two, the demonstration of a consecrated life. In other words, we also want to look at somebody. If we say this believer is consecrated, this Christian is consecrated life, this person is consecrated, what is it? What is he like? What is she like? If we want to look inside. It's just like if you have got a, a new gadget, you want to look inside, what does that gadget contain? What's the content? What is it made up of? And then after you have looked at the inside, you want to see what can he do? That's the second one. Well, with all the consecration, how do we recognize what does this person now do? In other words, what is a consecrated life? And number two, what does a consecrated, the consecrated life do to be and to do? What is and what does it? Those are the things we are looking at this morning by the grace of God. When we look at our text again, there are two things there. Number one, look at verse one. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is the presentation of your body unto God. That is the yielding of your body unto God. It's talking about doing it wholly, completely, purely, acceptably. It's talking about absolute surrender. You yield yourself, your life unto God. Does God demand that? Yes, he does. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. The Bible says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. What does that mean? Because Jesus Christ died for us all, then all of us, we died in him. In that he has paid the price, we died for him. How then do, should we live? If he has taken our death, our penalty, and he has died on our behalf, died for us, and we now are died, dead in him, what should be our living? Because Jesus Christ was raised again. In verse 15, and that he died for all, that they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. You see, it says, now you are, you are alive, you are living. You shall not live unto yourself, you live unto God who died for you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but who lives in me? Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what God requires from every believer. This is not saying, oh, oh, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to. No, no, no. It's just asking you. This is written to believers. The apostle by the Holy Ghost wrote this to believers. Present yourselves unto God, your bodies, as a living sacrifice. You are to present to, uh, to God, you know, in a way that is similar to those Old Testament offerings, animals. Uh, you are not going to take an animal for sacrifice, uh, uh, and you are negotiating with that animal. 
You say, sit down, and then you are going to hurry that one and put uh, clothes on that animal and put jewelry on that animal and be singing unto that animal and cajoling that animal. That's not the sacrifice. You know, what people want us to believe now is that when somebody becomes a Christian, you just have to be celebrated, you know, everybody raising you up. That is not a sacrifice. When you take something for sacrifice, you yield that thing completely. And you kill that, you slay that. Isaac understood that. And asked the father, we have the fire, we have the wood. Look at the knife in your hand. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? He said, God is going to supply. And when Isaac was going to be sacrificed, he was tied and put on the altar there. And then slain. That's the comparison. But there is also a contrast here in the sense that in those days, the animals were dead physically. But now you are alive, both physically and spiritually. It's saying now, it is not somebody that is sacrificing me. I am the one sacrificing myself. It is not something that is put on you. It is something you put on yourself. It's a choice. That ye present yourselves, your bodies, unto God. That's what God is saying. Nobody is going to do that for you. Pastor cannot do that for you. The preaching will come, the prayer will come, everything. But you are the one to do that. And that is where some believers, many believers, may I say, they don't understand. And they don't make spiritual progress. That person, that personality is still very, very strong. You know, to lay on the altar and to say, yes, it is God that is going to decide my life is difficult for some people. There will be argument, there will be screaming, there will be struggle. And that's why the Christian church has not progressed as we should progress. The church makes progress when we have consecrated people. People that they, they, they are dead and now they live by the life of Christ in them. So you see, you become a reflection of Christ because you choose consciously to be sacrificed unto God. Your life is swallowed up in God. You live unto God. You live to God. You are not serving your own will, but the will of the master. You are not serving your own will. And we say, okay. And many times some people, you know, this flesh has a way. And on, until that thing is crushed, you may think you are where you are not. Because many times God will not come to you directly. Sometimes he will, he will, you know, of course you are going to read it in the word of God, submit yourself to God, read it, and then you do it. Other times God is going to use other people to speak to you. And consecration means it is not always going to be at your convenience. Sometimes it is at a time when it is not convenient. Sometimes it is pastor that God is going to use. Brother, can you please help us do this? It's not a personal thing. The pastor is not going to call you, come and clean my car, come and drive me to my private appointment. Many times pastor will not ask you for that. But... Can we do this? Mm, I will look at my plan, whether it is convenient. And it is divine service. Many times, uh, you know, we take things to the extreme, especially because of the part of the world where we live. We are definitely, we consider one another. We don't want to offend one another. And pastor is very careful, you know, respects family, respects, uh, you know, privacy and other things like that. I say, uh, bro. And sometimes we take things so, too far. When there is a necessity, and this is what God wants done, and we say, okay, we should do this. Um, I have thought about it. Pastor, it's not convenient. It is not pastor. It is not man. It is divine service. If we will only do those things that are convenient, we will not do much. If we only do those things that perfectly align with our plan, if I'm not willing that my own plan in life alters, I'm not going to do much for God. Because God is greater than man. 
if I only do those things that I feel like doing, that I agree perfectly with my philosophy, with my mindset, I'm not going to do much. If I only do those things that I will agree with, I'm not going to do much. But the question is, is this demanded? Is this commanded? Is this what God is saying? Whether I understand it or not, I go ahead and get it done. Whether I like it or not, I go ahead and get it done. Those who do business, they know. If you, are, if you are doing business and you are only going to do those things that you like to do, only those things that are convenient, you will not go far in business. Because many times you will do some things that you even hate, that you don't like to do. They are not part of your nature. They are just, I'm not talking about sin. It's just not convenient. But for the sake of your business, you do that. If business people do that, in some countries... Do things that are completely opposite to their culture just because they want to trade with another, com uh, another country. Then we come to the kingdom of God and say, well, this thing is not convenient for me. It's not going to be like that because we are not going to do much if we are doing that. No, it's not going to work that way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together this morning? Hallelujah. It's practical. Jesus decides your, choice, your choices in life, in worship, in relationships, in work, in play, in recreation. Jesus deter determines who you are going to get married to. You don't say, well, I don't, want any, any, I, want, I don't want to go and pray for marriage. If God cannot decide whom you get married to, what kind of consecration is that? In recreation, where I go, what do I do? I'm going on vacation. Where are you going? Well, I'm just planning it. Uh, my wife and I, we just sit down and then we plan and say, well, where do we want to go? And I said, where is God inside that vacation? Oh, do we need to pray about vacation? I just feel, I just, I mean, I have the money. I, have, I, have, I can pay for the flight. I can pay for the place. We, we just go. Is that the time God wants you to go on vacation? How do you know it is God's time for vacation? But I've, I've already booked my flight. Suppose you, you, you made up your mind to go on vacation, and then you say, Pastor, I'm going on vacation, and Pastor said no. What do you do? I'm just making it practical. If you say, this pastor is my pastor, I commit the care of my soul into his life, you have booked your flight. You have done everything. Maybe you say you are even a worker in the church. And we are planning. In the place of work, before you go on vacation, are you not going to inform your boss and to say, well, I'm planning to take vacation at this time so that you see, uh, okay, uh, oh, yes, you can. Uh, the boss says go. Then you come to church. Who is greater, boss or pastor? Your soul or your body? And then... You have done it, you have booked the flight, you have done everything, and then maybe one day or two days before you go, to, Pastor, I'm going. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going on vacation. Do we do that? That's not consecration. I say, oh, does Pastor need to know? Why shouldn't Pastor know? It's not prying to your private life, but you also look if your boss in the place of work will know. Are you more consecrated to, you, to the place of work than to Jesus Christ and to the house of God? I mean, that's just practical. So that, that's, that's what God is, I mean, if you want to do practical Christianity, it's going to touch something. It's going to touch something. You can't live the life and then you say, well, I just, I just do what I like. No, it is. It's not, the, it's not Christianity. Eh? Present your body unto God, a living sacrifice. And also, when we say we are presenting to God, it is not a great thing. It's not a big thing that we say, okay, God has ministers in his house. Some people will say, well, I, I, I will obey God, though, but I'm not, my life is not under man. It's, it's a lie. If the man, that God, physical man, that God has appointed over you, you cannot respond, how do you know you obey the God that you cannot see? Do I say that it's in man or it's in the Bible? Of course, the Bible says he that says he loves God 
and hates his brother. How can he say that he loves God? The one that God has created that you can see you don't love him. How do you say you love God? God is more practical than some people. So that's consecration. That's when you look at that person. That person is not just making his own plans and going anywhere. Oh, you have said that. And the pastor says, no, sorry, you, you can't do this. I said, pastor, that's all right. Does it mean pastor is wicked? Of course. If pastor is consecrated, he knows that he's, not out, he's, he's out to, to help and to care for the flock, not to destroy their lives. But there are points, there are times in which I said, no, you can't do this. And blessed is that man, that woman, that has somebody in his life that can say you can't do this. There are some people that will say, whatever I want to do, nobody can stop me. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. You rise up, you tell your wife, nobody can stop me from doing this. Or you tell your husband, this one I want to do, nobody can stop me. Nobody on earth can stop me. It's very dangerous. There must be at least somebody. Who will be able to say, brother, you can do this? It is for your own safety. It is for your own life. The moment you become a lot to yourself, it is a dangerous thing. This person I want to marry, nobody is going to, no, no, no matter, no, 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 no. There must be somebody that will say, my brother, what are you doing? And it is you that you are going to present your body that way. Nobody can put that on you. It's a personal choice. Consecration is personal. It is what you allow. And that's why we see many, many people, you know, somebody gets born again today, and before you know it, it says, I have my own church. They don't last. The reason is very simple. The person who cannot stay under the yoke and obey somebody else, when that person becomes a leader, he doesn't know what it means. God does not allow them to move. The reason is very simple. They have not put themselves under the yoke. But you are there under the yoke, crushed under the yoke, you know, and God now promotes you. Have you read in the Bible, he that humbles himself, what does God do? God raises him up. Amen. That is... A surrendered life. The second one is there also. Look at verse 2 of our text, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Bible now says there is this total separation. That if you are going to really submit yourself, surrender yourself to God, there is something that will make that one impossible. As long as you are glued to the word, you cannot yield yourself to God. You cannot serve two masters. And that's why the Bible says to make number one possible, this number two, you must take care of it. It says in verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. You have to be changed. Something has to happen. In Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, and when we talk about the world, the world is nearer than many times we think. We say, yeah, the world outside there, but there is a world that is near. That's what Jesus Christ said. Because this thing that Paul the Apostle is writing, is not new. Look at it in chapter 14 of of, of Luke, I read from verse 25. And, he, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, praise the Lord. Uh, well, you know, Jesus is different. It, nowadays, when great multitudes are following people, you go to the stadium or where they are this, when great multitudes are following, whether they are uh, drinking or something, because they want their contribution. The fans. Jesus is not out to please fans. He turned because great multitudes. He had been doing miracles and all those things. Great multitudes following. But then he wanted to say something to them. If any man come to me and hate not his father. Are we, are we together? And mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. 
yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He uses a, a strong word there, hate. The Bible says we shall not hate our brother in our heart, but Jesus Christ says this is it. It's not talking about the hatred that you are going to kill or to destroy. It's all on the relative sense. You put nobody above Jesus. In fact, put it this way, stronger. Jesus is above every other person, including himself. And he's talking about those people. Look, look at them here eh, in verse 26. He's talking about father. Of course, you should honor your father. You should honor your mother. But Jesus is above. If your father or mother is going to demand something that is against Jesus, he's saying, hey, this one cannot happen. I love you. I respect you. I honor you. But Jesus first. He says, father, mother, what else? Wife. wife. As you know, some people, they will say, well, I, 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 I respect my marriage. Of course, you will respect marriage. I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my marriage. So anything my husband is going to ask, anything, I'm doing this for my wife. I'm doing this for Hey, wait. There comes a place where we don't negotiate. It doesn't happen. I prefer to lose that marriage. If that one will mean I lose the marriage with Jesus Christ. This one is untouchable. This one, we don't touch it. If wife or husband demands something, hey, no, we don't, we don't touch this one. That is a consecrated life. You will do everything necessary. If it is pleading, if it is, you know, doing something to, for your partner, to, but you are not going to. You are not going to, to, to violate Jesus. You can't do that. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. Unless you do this thing for me, you don't love me. What do I do for you? Unless I go with you to sin, hey, this is the, the wife. And the husband is saying, this way you dress. Unless you dress and expose your chest. Eh? Just like the other people uh, eh, outside, unless you dress like that, I, you know, we cannot, this marriage will not continue. It's, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I honor you. I respect you. I will do everything a wife should do. But for me to expose my nakedness to please anybody, I can't do that. That is what we are talking about. I say, eh, you don't want to dress. You look at all these other girls that are dressed. I'm not like them. I'm a child of God. That is, that, is, that is where the child of God stands out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what God is saying unto you in particular. And the same thing with husband. The wife is demanding, uh, if you don't do this, and uh, look at these other people, look at this other person. I, you know how much I love you? This area is untouchable. It's just clear. That is... The consecrated life. They come out of the world. It means you have a priority. To be his disciple is to put him before and above all, including yourself and your relationships. While you maintain pure love to men and care for your family, it must be clear that everything bows to the will of Jesus. To compromise is to deny Jesus. It also means you have a distinction. You separate yourself from all that defiles, no matter how dear, how common, or how acceptable. Other people may be doing it. But if it is defiling, you separate yourself. You do not live at the border of Egypt. You go to the center of Canaan. And for you, the question is not, uh, hey, but is this sinful? Uh, but if I do this, that's sinful. No, that's not the question. Your question is more, what else can I do to please God? What is his perfect will for me? You have seen it in, our, in Romans chapter 12. He said, the perfect will of God. You burn every bridge that can lead you back to the world. 
And of course, there is a lifestyle that goes with it. You humble yourself before God and man. You take up your cross and follow Jesus. Those who see you, they see grace. They see Jesus. They see love. They see humility. They see the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, you know, there is a lot of advertisement that goes on stage now. Uh, you know, everybody is just external. Uh, you are going to destroy all that. Even in ministry, that before you even minister, the, only, the first thing we see is, is the world. When people sing, we must first see the beauty of the attire. All the paparazzi or whatever they, they say, all the things that go so that before you even sing, they say, yes, the one is going to sing. You are singing unto Jesus, but you are the point of attention. You want to, your skill, your dressing and everything so that people say, yeah, this is, wow. I'm not saying we should be shabby, no. But you know what I'm talking about? You go on the, on the WhatsApp page or profile page of people nowadays. I begin to get, you know, very, very concerned about, about members of our church. And I'm asking, what makes you happy? What makes you happy? What are you living for? And then you see this and this and this and this and this and this and everybody must know everything that is happening to you. Sometimes even when you see people in church, great, look at their web, 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 web profile picture. And you see some pictures there and you are saying, what is going on? This is not consecration. This is not the way the Christian should live. The Christian is sober. Yeah, you go Facebook and everything. And then I'm asking myself, what is the priority of the church? Is everything, you, you know, uh, and, and, and I did my wedding. Many of them, you see how many people came. And we did this celebration. See how many people came. We went on this vacation. See how many, where, where, where we went and everything. Okay? Is that the gospel? And I'm asking myself, members of the church, children of God, the gospel is no longer the gospel that we promote Jesus. We are promoting ourselves. You say, but that's Facebook. What else? In those days, there was no Facebook. They did it physically. You are doing it digitally. What is the difference? It is the heart. The heart is the same. And you always talk about the things that are important to you. Well, let's reflect about this. Consecration is that I'm a child of God. I, we rejoice with them that are rejoicing. We, we do everything, but it should not now become as if this is the center of attention. How, well, how then do we have the heart to preach the gospel? We become like the people of the world. I mean, they, 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 they advertise their lives on Facebook. We advertise our lives on, on, on Facebook. Our property. Don't you see how nice I am? The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. Where is that one? Where is sobriety? The sober Christian life. Be sober, be vigilant. With all this hilarity that we have on Facebook, on WhatsApp, everywhere, I'm asking myself, what is this? How can we preach the gospel this way? How can we say we are consecrated? How many people are we winning? Winning to myself or winning to Jesus? What is the difference now? We don't see and everybody will say, oh, sister, I like it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you are, you know, you dress in a particular way, and then you do this, and you are gorgeous with your goggle or whatever, and you pose very well, and then other members of the church like, like, like. And you are reading the Bible. It's not practical. Like, 
like like the whole thing everybody the only thing that we are looking at is physical beauty physical oh this your everything thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up and some people that's the, all the time they spend on that thing that's what how are you going to preach the gospel how are you going to pray how are you going to consecrate yourself to the lord if from, if, if we don't talk about it uh, you will not hear but this is not it. This is not consecration. This is, this is worldliness. All the time we use for that, there is no prayer. There is nothing else. I'm not saying you should be praying all through the night, all through the day. But if the thing, you know, if you watch some things before you go to sleep, those are the things you'll be dreaming about. If majority of your time is to watch, and then you go and watch, and you go and watch, with all the watching, how holy are we? How pure are we? Consecration, you have to kneel down. The, pray, the message that I'm preaching today is not a message you just hear, praise God. You will kneel down because the, the body doesn't like it. The flesh doesn't like it. I cannot pretend here that everybody will say, Pastor, we just praise God because of the message you are preaching. I'm not looking for that. If you are going to profit from this message, you go on your knees. And you're going to say, God, something has to change in my life. Um, you have to visit Calvary again and say, God, take the word out of my heart. I want, I want to be crucified. I want to be changed. That's the only way. That's the only response. You cannot do this without prayer. You cannot do this without going back to the one who saved you if you are saved. You cannot do this without repentance and say, God, I have missed something. I want a complete change in my character, in my life. I want to be crucified. That the only thing, the only commendation that I will, that will count in my life is the commendation that comes from, he from heaven. That's the only way. And you can't do this without kneeling down and praying. You can't do this by just partially reading the Bible. No, you have to go down. You have to read that word of God. And then God opens your eyes. You see it again. You see another one. You see, and continue praying. Say, it's not finished. God, it's not finished. I know it's not finished. It's not finished. Until you are crushed. Until you are broken. Until you are melted. Until you become like a child. That God can say, this is my will. And you say, yes, that is the way that I do. That is what prayer is going to do in your life. I pray it will happen in Jesus' name. How do we demonstrate it? Let's quickly read from Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. You are going to serve. And you present your gifts unto the Lord. You yield those gifts, those talents, your affection, you, you, the members. Of, let's read it from the Bible. From verse 4. But from verse 3. For I say, through the grace of Given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think him of himself more highly. Do you see that? Than he ought to think, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. But to think how, my brethren, in verse 3, how do we think? Soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Do you see sobriety there? We think soberly. Just proud thinking and, uh, you know, nobody can tell me what I do. And I don't, that's not Christianity. In verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts. Amen. Do you, do you see the beauty of it? Now, when you consecrate yourself, we have gifts. Some can sing very well, praise God for that. Some can pray, some can teach, some can. There are many gifts that God has given unto us, and those gifts are different. There is nobody that has all the gifts. Now, how do we use those gifts? When we consecrate those gifts unto the Lord, they become beautiful. Eh? So the Bible says, having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, to pro prophesy according to what? To the proportion of faith. Don't copy somebody else. And don't try to make an impression. Or ministry, what do you do? Let us wait on our ministry. He that teaches, what should he do? Uh, open the Bible, open the Bible, open the Bible, open the Bible. He that teaches. Eh? Uh, uh, verse 7, what do, does he do? How does he do it? He waits on teaching. Verse 8, or he that exhorted on what? Exhortation, you are, you are just, you are thorough. You, you, you stay at it. He that give it, eh, you are imparting something, let him do it with what? With simplicity. He that ruleth. How? 
You know those who rule in the house of God? Eh, you have leaders who rule in the house. You are diligent. You check everything. You are not going to leave anything to chance because you want to profit the house of God. You just, you just consecrate it and you say, God, I don't want to let anything be wanting. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy, how? With cheerfulness. You serve with cheerfulness. You are showing mercy to people. You are cheerful about it. God loveth a cheerful giver. Let love we be without dissimulation. Dissimulation or hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. What do you do? Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, what do we do? What does that mean? And I say, you know, no, to honor, when it is a matter of honor, I say, give it to my brother, give it to my sister. And you don't feel anything bad about it. Hey, it must be mine. Why is it that it's only when it is coming, hey, it's only him, it's only no. In honor, preferring one another. I say, oh, it's us. oh, let my brother have it. Let my brother have it. In honor, let my sister have it. Preferring one another. Amen. Come to church and then and they say, Oh, bro, that message you took, that teaching you did, that singing, in fact, it's, we have never had it in that version. So, oh, in fact, do you know that? Bro taught me. Sister taught me. You understand that kind of a thing? In honor, preferring one another. I say, Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I know. I know God has been working on me. You know what I'm saying? It's the grace of God. But we know. In honor, preferring one another. In honor, preferring one another. And you are not going to be bitter about it. It's a joyful thing. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Do you see the consecrated lives? Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. That's how you demonstrate it. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Do you see that? Oh God, oh Lord, they, they, those that are against me. Oh Lord, uh, descend down. No, no, no. They consecrated life, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Ah, is it only the, eh? and the other time they give testimony and that God provided a car and now they are giving a testimony. God has provided a house. Ah, is it only them that God is doing something for? What do you do? Rejoice with them that rejoice. That's the demonstration of a consecrated life. Weep with them that weep. That's their hair. It's his own problem. Do we tell him? Weep with them that are weeping. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. Do you see that? Condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Do not mind high things. You know some people, they just want, it can't be high enough. The Bible says condescend. What does it mean to condescend? Uh, come down, come down, lower it, lower it. Don't, don't raise it too high. Come, condescend. He that is down, if fear no fall. Condescend, condescend. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceable, peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if there an enemy hunger, what do you do? Feed him. That's a demonstration. If he thirst, what do you do? Give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome of evil. How do we overcome evil? Overcome evil with good. Let's rise up to pray. I want you to commit yourself to God now. And ask the Lord, Lord, um, I'm yielding. I'm surrendering. Remember I said God is taking us on, the, on a journey. And you are going to ask the Lord, Lord, I, I make a choice. What are you going to tell God? How are you going to pray about this? It's a personal prayer, but it must be a fervent prayer. If you want to kneel down, you can kneel down. Whatever posture you want to take, but you must talk to God and to say, God, I want something. I want something. I don't just want this one to go just like that.
God wants to do something in your life. God wants to do something in your life. There is, there is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing too hard for God. If you are going to accept God's comment about your life today, and you say, Lord, I, I, I give me grace. Oh, Lord, give me grace. This one, I have seen it. Take it away. That one, I have seen it. Take it away. Oh, Lord, I surrender. This way that I have been walking, this way I have been, these choices that I have made, oh, Lord, I surrender. I yield so that your will will be done in my life. It's time for prayer. It's time for prayer. If you have not been born again, you can say, God, I, 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 want to start, I want to be born again. I'm giving my life to Jesus. The Lord can do that. So that you become a child of God. And then you can rejoice. You can rejoice. You can rejoice in a consecrated life. You can call upon the name of the Lord. This day is a day of choice. He that exalts himself shall be abased. He that humbles himself shall be lifted up. You can cry unto the Lord, Lord, I want, I want a change. A change in my character, a change in my life. When people see me, they must see Jesus. They must see humility. They must see grace in my life. I surrender my life. Who, who, what, what do you want to do with your life? If not to give it completely to Jesus. Lord, whatever you want to do with my life, I just yield that life to you. Whosoever you are going to use to... to to help me to, to, to perform your will in my life. Lord, that's what I want to do. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. If everything about your life has just been external, you begin to pray, Lord, I want a change. I want a change. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me through. All this public show, all this worldly show, everywhere. We now don't know the, the difference between Christians and unbelievers. They are showing their externals. You are showing your externals. No, say, God, I, I want you to have mercy upon me. I want a change. I want a change. A change in my life. A change in my character. This is time for a prayer. This is time for prayer. This is time to yield yourself completely unto God and to say, God, I want you to touch my life. I want you to touch my heart. I want you to touch my spirit. I want you to transform me. With God, all things are possible. Let's talk to God a little. Let's ask him to take over our life, to take over our... It's a personal thing. You say, God, I don't want to continue the way I have been. I want, to, I want to go up. I want to go up. Take my life. Let it be consecrated, Lord, to you. Take my moments. Take my days. Take my intellect. Take my, my lips. Take my leg. Let me take my feet, take my hands, take my heart, take my will, take my life, take it all, take my silver, take my gold, take everything. I love you in life, I will love you in death. I'm yielding, I'm yielding. Tell the Lord I yield. You know, every attachment to the world, everything that binds me to the world, that makes me, the world, your God, let the fire fall from the altar and burn those things. That's how to pray. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for this powerful message you have given to us. We are asking for your grace to be obedient, to give all unto Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are asking, O oh God, sufficient grace that will be abiding in your word in Jesus' name, that will consecrate everything, our talent, our silver, our body, everything unto you, Lord, in Jesus' name. But as a church, we are crying, oh God, do a new thing in our life in Jesus' name. The man of God, I pray, 
pray him again in Jesus' name. Anoint him, empower him to give us more so that we can be able to consecrate everything unto you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We want to wish you a pleasant week ahead. For our brethren online, please hold on so we take the roll call together. And you have the outlines as well. Um, it's for us to go through it and uh, pray upon it as well. We are also reminded about the upcoming global crusade. It's starting on Thursday. So please connect online. And on Friday, we are all here at 6 p.m. On Saturday at 5 p.m. On Sunday, the service starts at 10 o'clock. And as we all keep these meetings in mind, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. For our brethren online, um, I would start with Sister Justina. Good afternoon. Sister Justina, good afternoon. Okay. Yes. Mama Regina, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank Amen. you for connecting. Amen. Sister Kusasira, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pastor. Thank you for connecting. And we also have Bokilichi connected as well. Good morning to you, Bokilichi. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah. So we want to thank you again for connecting. Um, Thank you and God bless you. You're your web dancer. <laughs> <laughs>